So when I was posting videos yesterday, I had a person ask me if I could do a quick video showing how to remove the RF modulator from the ColecoVision. Well, this is a, the game board from the Atom, but this is basically exactly the same thing. It's all the same parts. It's just reorganized a little different for the Atom. It's got a few extra buffer chips on it. Other than that, it's the same thing. So I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to get the RF modulator out of here and why you would want to. You're going to just need soldering iron, a good hot one, and a solder sucker. You probably could use it with a wick, but it's going to be kind of hard. First thing to do, remove your cap. I say pull this off first because it can sometimes be stuck, so you want to pull it off while everything's still attached. Remove your cap. Now turn it over. And if you look, you'll see, and let me just show you. This is a ColecoVision board I'm working on. A ColecoVision has... Those are in, like, um, whatever you call these, ground plane traces. That's where their attachments are. Whereas, on the Atom, they're the same attachments, but they buried them in solder. So, what you do is, you take, you're going to have, you're going to have five of them. Five or six. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. And I guess they only have four on the Atom. One, two, three, and four. They don't have the fifth one over here like they do on the ColecoVision. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your soldering iron, lay it up against there and just really liquefy all that solder. Take your solder sucker and suck it all out as much as you can. Again, liquefy it, suck it out. That's why the manual one works really nice for doing this. Because you're not fighting with wires and you're just going in here and you just pop it out. So that one's pretty loose. And you know what you can also do to make it easier is once you've got most of the stuff out, take your soldering iron and just, if it's bent, wiggle this off so it's not attaching anywhere. So now it's completely unhooked from it to the sides. Now I'm going to do the same one over here. Warm it up. Suck it up. Warm it up. When I first got the solder, this, the solder sucker here, I was worried about putting the plastic on it. I thought the plastic would melt. But this plastic seems to really take heat very well. So the same thing here. That one's all unhooked. Next one. See a big blob of solder there? I'm going to get rid of most of that right now. Put this on. I'm going sideways on it. I, I got a heat gun. I have not tried this with a heat gun yet. I've been told that you can use a heat gun on really, and this is one of those industrial style heat guns, not a, not a um, little dinky one. I was told you can use a heat gun to heat this stuff up and remove chips from circuit boards. I've never tried it yet. I don't know what it would do to anything. I guess it's just for salvaging chips. It's not for actually salvaging the board the chips are on. Once you do this a few times, you get a good feel for how to heat up the solder and where to put your iron and where to put the solder sucker to get the vast majority of solder out. See, and this one has a lot. So I'm having to work my way around it to get it out. They really wanted to make sure this one did not come loose. Ooh. Almost all of it. Hey, a little spot here it looks like right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push on it a little bit just to try to make sure it's separated off and then suck out this a little more in here if I can. One reason why it's hard to get all this solder out is because the RF modulator can is actually absorbing a lot of the heat you're putting in. Oh, there's one over here too. So there is five on this one. It's absorbing a lot of the heat I'm putting into it.
lot of solder on this one. But if you just take your time and work around it, you can get the vast majority of this solder out. And I'll show you another trick too. Once I get most of this out, I can do something else also. But I'm getting there. Now, I probably could try to try to use a solder wick here. But as I said in other videos, I have never really had success with a solder wick. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. But I just seem to get the solder wick stuck to whatever I'm trying to desolder. Got a lot of solder in there. Oh, I gotta take my soldering iron apart and clean it inside. All that gunk in there. See how it built up? And my soldering tip actually got shut down. Yeah. You unscrew, do you not? Seems like you do. Together here. I guess I must have shoved it through. Let me need something to push it down anyway. That don't work. Almost got it. There we go. I must have shoved it in when I was tapping on it. So there we go. Push it back in there. Make sure it's nice and seated well. Screw it back together. You don't have a good um, what do you call it seat. You don't have a good seal. Seal is probably the better word. If you have a good seal, you're never going to be able to suction anything out. See that solder coming out of there? All right, now we got a good clean. Now let's try it again. Get that last one. That one did better that time. All right, and one more. This one right here. See how much solder they got in this one spot here? It's like a ton of it. It's like a giant blob. They really wanted to make sure this RF modulator did not move. They were using the solder to support the modulator. The structural support, I guess you would say. Almost got all of it. Now, I want to warn you if you're using a solder sucker like I am, be a little bit more careful about where you're ejecting your solder out. You don't want to eject your solder out on your board here. 
But what I've done now is I basically have loosened them all up and I'll show you how I get it out the rest of the way once I get over here. Now, when you flip it over, you'll see that the PCB that we want to get to is attached here, 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 and here, and here. Six different spots. We need to remove that. Those should be a little easier because there's not a ton of solder down there. I should be able to just heat this up and hit it with the sucker and it's gone. Once I get my soldering iron in the right place so it heats it up. This one's kind of hard because I got a pin right in the way here. So I can't get a good... There we go. Couldn't get a good connection in there. A uh, good, yeah, connection. Couldn't touch it well with the soldering iron. Couldn't get the solder sucker in close. All right, soldering iron is cooling off for some reason. I've noticed it does that, and if I like, brush it with the solder with the brass, so it's getting warm again. It's almost like the carbon that's built up on it. Acts like an insulator. Almost there. And I'm going to be using the soldering iron to remove the last little piece as I pull the can off. Let's try a trick. I'm going to take this screwdriver between the PCB and the can, and when I heat this up, I'm just going to flex the can out a little bit to get the PCB to let go, and then let it cool. Give it that little surface of solder that's wanting to hold it together like a string. There. Yeah. You do that too. If you're having a hard time getting in there and getting the last of that solder out, you can just do that to separate them. Just like that. Go on a little bit so that the solder is out. And continue on. Working on the ColecoVision one is a little easier than on the actual Atom one. It's almost as if they decided to use a better technique of building things on the Atom. Watch for little balls of solder like that right there. Get rid of those things. One more. As, I, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm heating it up. I'm removing the most of it with the sucker. And then come back and I'm just separating them here. I'm not putting a lot of pressure or anything. I'm just pulling it, flexing it a little bit. And pushing down just to get the solder to separate. So then while I'm separating, I'm going to hit the sucker one more time. Get some more solder out of there. Then do it. Like so. Alright, so now the can is separate from the board. But it's still attached down here in a few spots. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to see what can I wiggle out. And if I can't wiggle out, I'm going to take my other screwdriver, which has a fire tip. I'm going to use this. I'm going to go underneath the can, wherever I can find a gap. If I can find a gap, that is. And put a little pressure on it. i got some hot glue over here. Legal in all their wisdom, love to use hot glue on everything they made, it seemed. I'm just going around trying to find the best place to begin my removal can. And it's kind of pretty hard to get a screwdriver or anything under here just to can to let go. Wow, it's really in there good. So let's see what I can do. I'll try to go by hand. It's just going to get hot on my fingers. What I'm, gonna, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get enough leverage on it. See how I popped that out? That's what I want to do. I was trying to get a screwdriver there so I can do that without having to use my hand. But I had to use my hand. And what I'll do is I'll do this one now. I'm pulling on it from the bottom and I'm going to heat this up until I can get it out. I also have one over here too. This one may be holding it. Yeah, that one was holding it. Ooh, a little splash of solder on the finger. Got a little hot there. So we got one, two, three out. We have four left over here. This one's just about out already. So I'm just going to hit this a little bit more with a little bit more heat. That's out. And the last one over here is this one. And again, what I'm doing is I'm just pulling down on it without putting a lot of pressure on it. And I'm just heating the solder up so it lets it go. See? There we go. Cans off. Now what you have is you have a PCB board that's attached by this little plastic connector with solder and these two clips. This is actually pretty easy to get out. Again, solder sucker or the wick if you want to use a wick. What I'm going to do is you have, the only place that the RF modulator PCB connects to the actual board is this little string of one, two, three, four, eight connections. So what you just do is you got to heat them up, clean off the carbon. You might have to add some solder to get a good connect, get a good seal, but I don't know. Let's see. Heat this pin up. Suck out the solder. Lay it against the pin. Suck out the solder. These are coming up very easily. Hit against the pin. Suck out the solder. Just go down the whole line, all eight of them. Always brush off your boards. Whoa, whoa, table moves. Brush off your boards. Blow them off, whatever you need to do, just make sure there's no solder left laying around anywhere that came off from the solder sucker or anything like that. You don't want to short something. Now, see if you can see, I removed the, those eight pins, and now these little green. Ah, something fell down. I don't know what that was. These little green things. Push this one in here. These green tabs. I'm going to push them in. So you push the tabs in, and the board comes up, and it's been removed. Now you can get to the bottom here. You can replace anything that's in here. You can get underneath here, replace anything that's in there. Then to put it back together is the reverse of that. Take and set these down so that all eight of the pins come through again. If you clean out the solder good, they'll go right. See, they're going real good like that. Hit them with some solder to lock them in place. See, lock it there. Eight piece blabs of solder. Take your can. Put your can back on. You may have to flip it over to warm up these holes to get it back in. Once you get the holes them back in, solder to hold them in place. Then to re-solder these, take a small screwdriver. Go underneath the where they got the little ridges in here. Take the screwdriver and go under it. Just a little to hold it up so that the pad right there is against it. Put some solder on that one and then just work your way around doing the same thing until you got it all back together. It's very easy to take apart. Very easy to put back together. It's just a matter of getting through. 
on an Atom, you got a ton of solder. On the ColecoVision, there's a lot less and it's a lot easier. But it's just a matter of getting through that solder. And other than that, it's really easy. Have a great day.